sorry, just getting the uh, speaker, um, microphone ready there. Um, I'm Suzanne Hemingway, I'm Strategic Director here for the City Council. Um, and I'm introducing the report around Cambridge Live. This report um, brings to you a report that the Council commissioned, looking at the circumstances leading up to the transition where Cambridge Live has been brought. Just to be a little bit further away from the microphone. So sorry. To sort of I'm sorry, you did say 20 centimetres, and the yeah. estimate was a little out there. <laughs> okay, is that better? Yes, thank you. Okay. What I'm presenting to you here this evening is a report carried out by an independent consultant with no previous relationship with either the city or with Cambridge Live, who's looked at the circumstances around the setup of Cambridge Live um, and the circumstances that then led to uh, the decisions by both organisations that Cambridge Live needed to transfer its services back to the City Council. I think the report is fairly self-explanatory. There are lessons for the council to take if it is ever to commission, um, it is ever to set up arm's length arrangements in the future, or in terms of thinking about how it might partner, not only in the arts sector, but in other sectors, being very clear about what those relationships are and what the role of people that the council might nominate onto boards might be. Um, the report comes in the context of there being pressures on a number of other trusts in the wider sector. It's not an easy business to be in, so I think we should read it in, in the light of that and the fact that the people who were involved with Cambridge Alive you know, were, were in what is quite a difficult business, and the council taking those services back will have to recognise those ongoing pressures. Um, I'd like to take the opportunity before we go into debate about the item to thank the officers who've been involved in Cambridge Live um, and who've had to work particularly hard to see through the transition coming back to the council for making sure that the services that are really important to the city have continued because that was the decision that was taken was to make sure that cultural services continued so whilst you know they're all out there doing their jobs I think it's important to know that. Um, I think that's all I need to say in terms of introduction. I'm happy to take questions or issues. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, thank you, Jeff. Um, just, uh, firstly, um, I agree it's that um, excellent sort of report has come to committee. Uh, one of the questions I was left with having read it was it's made reference to a few times that there was essentially some uh, you know, uh, adverse psychology between the two groups of council and uh, the organisation question. And I was just wondering if um, you had any comment on how or why that has developed and whether or not it could have been addressed. Um, let's talk a bit more about adverse psychology, I think, quite understand that. So, there, yes. was some ad there was some, I'll, I'll quote from the report. I'll, I'll quote from the report. Right, yeah, go on. Um, an unnecessary and unhelpful hostility. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Um, I just have one, so, so, uh, so part of the reason for setting up Cambridge Live was to get sponsorship from the private sector uh, which could be used by that organisation. So I presume that going forward we will continue to seek that sort of funding if available. I know it's a difficult marketplace and even more so now that some, some providers of funding are no longer um, uh, desirable because of what they do in the marketplace, but there's still money out there, I suppose, so we will still seek that. Any more questions? No, back to you then, Suzanne. Um, the report does indeed say that there were some difficult relationships, and clearly the reviewer has spoken to a number of people involved from, from both sides, and so therefore I take that as, as true. Um, having said that, I think that officers on, in both organisations were, for the most part, working hard to try to make the partnership work, there may be lessons for the council about being um, more explicit in making sure that we're clear what the boundaries of those relationships are, but I think it's um, always going to be a difficult journey, and the learning from other arms length organisations is that it is quite difficult to get those relationships right in the early years. I wasn't with the council at the point that Cambridge Life was set up. Um, do you want to add anything? The, the only thing I would add is that um, I think it was also about the two organisations 
establishing different ways of working and you know sort of Cambridge Live wanted their identity as a as an arm's length organisation we would we were sort of feeling our way as both organisations in sort of recalibrating those relationships um, but I, I wasn't aware of significant issues that made me concerned at the time that you know we were going we were going off in very different directions but I think it's it is something that comes through the report that um, it was a different relationship and both both parties needed to get used to that. In terms of your question around um, sponsorship Yes, if sponsorship is available, we will absolutely seek, absolutely be continuing to seek sponsorship. It is a difficult area. Um, it's an area that we'd hoped Cambridge Live might have more ability to attract funding in than we did, but I think they found it also to be a difficult area. But where we have events that we may be able to attract sponsors for, we'll, we'll absolutely be working to do so. And as ever, if any councillors have any particular suggestions on those, um, we, we'd welcome them. Thanks very much, Suzanne. Um, okay, so we'll go to recommendation then, which is I don't page number, but I'll read out. The Executive Council is recommended to note the report and to ask officers to consider how the learning might best be applied to current and future relationships. All those in favour of that recommendation? Yes, okay. Thank you very much. Does the Executive Council accept the recommendation? I do, and I would like to add my thanks to all the staff. Um, there's been a huge amount of hard work and particularly I want to kind of, I became exec councillor about a year and a half ago and I'm very aware of the very hard work that went into supporting that transition back into the city and I really want to pay tribute to all the work that the Cambridge Life staff and the city council staff have put into making that smooth process. Thank you very much for that councillor and thank you to everybody. That's the end of Environment and Scrutiny tonight.